Hey, Steve, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, hey. Steve, this is Dave. Hi, nice to meet you, mate. Hey. My name is Mark Joyner. Steve Ryan here says that he can run a vehicle on 60% water. I said, prove it. <laughs> Dave here is a local Auckland mechanic. A very good friend of mine recommended him, said he's been working with him for years. Independent of all of this, yeah, mostly, 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 I got Dave through another friend, so I knew that there was absolutely no way that these folks could have a connection. And I brought my own water. What we're going to do is just basically, let's chuck a bit in here. Would you expect this mixture as it is to, uh, to run as you've seen it mixed? Yeah, not, not with half water. Um, you know, like, like a diesel would run on kerosene, it might run on waste oil, but, but when there's half of it water in there, yeah, I don't, I don't think that would run. Okay, so that's no longer the standard diesel runoff. Yeah, this container's gone down quite a bit, so it clearly is running on the fuel now. Wait a minute. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's back it up. Anyone who knows me and the work that I've been doing with the philanthropic project called Construct Zero knows that I'm very interested in future technology, especially future technology that facilitates the freedom of humanity. So I'm hardly an impartial observer in this. I mean, I really, really want this to work. So I thought that the only way for me to look at this objectively would be to bring in an outside observer who is completely disconnected to any of this. So let's take a closer look and see what we discovered. For me, I'm interested in fuels that would get us uh, off the dependence of normal fossil fuel. So these metal shavings that are used in this, are these things that would be uh, commonly found at, at a low cost? Yes, basically it's pretty cheap. The line that we've taken off is the one that comes directly from the fuel tank in the back of the vehicle, yeah. runs straight up to the front and goes straight into the injector pump, which then disperses supplies it out to the injectors. Okay. So we take that off and we're basically replacing the fuel tank in the car with this little container here. Um, as it is now, with the fuel line disconnected, how long would the vehicle run? Uh, probably 40 seconds to a minute. 40 like seconds that. to a minute. So if we can run it for longer than a minute, you'd be confident that they're actually running if, it off if, this. If it sat there and ran on that for, for, I don't know, two or three minutes, it's certainly it's pretty obvious that it is running on, on that whatever's in that container. Okay, you'd be quite confident. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go inside here and we're actually going to mix up the fuel. I'm going to pull out a bottle, I'm going to take a little sip, verify that this is indeed water, at least it tastes like water. All right, so there we go. We're gonna hand this over to Steve and Steve's gonna do his magic. So what we're gonna do is, this is our little catalyst and the catalyst that we use, so it's nothing too, it looks like sand and you know, mm -hmm. nothing too exciting. What we're gonna do is just basically, let's chuck a bit in here. And what exactly is the, the mixture here, Steve? I know that there are two metals, of course, that you can't talk about, but the rest is waste oil and... Well, waste oils, like, for example, Dave wants to look at that. That's just your classic engineering uh, mechanical shop, which has probably got ATF in it. It's yeah. probably got a bit of engine oil used. It's probably got some software in it. It's got some PCBs in it. It's got some toxins in it. Probably got a bit of glycol in it. And that's it's standard waste oil. That's the standard out of uh, engineering. And Dave, you can verify this is just standard waste oil. It doesn't look any, any different. So what we're going to do is just chuck some more of this in here. Then we're going to do, I'm going to say, and then I'm going to be exciting because I know Dave likes transmission fluid. This is just ran, this is just random volumes that you're just throwing in. Yeah, just for you today. You know, I can go really technical on it, but you know, I, I know the volume and capacity, but because you want 50% water today, I'm just chucking any waste product that I've got, just to have a bit of excitement, you know. So as long as the, the, whatever waste product you're throwing in there has some kind of lubricative uh, function, yeah. that will work. So yeah, if, 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 if we want to use a fish and chip oil, I can chuck some of that in there now. It doesn't really matter, it's just, you know. So I'm just going to chuck a bit of this in. I'm going to be David Copperfield. <laughs> no, seriously, we're just going to um, just wipe it. I'm going to get Dave to cut this for me. I'm going to just get him to shake it. Yeah. So just put your finger on that for me. Yeah. Like that, yep, and just shake it. Yeah, just like a pina colada. So we know that we have uh, 750 milliliters of, of water originally in this uh, bottle. So we'll pour it out here, we can do a little math to find out how much exactly went into the jar, and then we can measure what's in the jar and we can find out exactly how much water is in there. So what have we got, Steve? Uh, you have about, uh, what have we got? You have uh, just under 500 mils. Can I check us the other? 
And Chris? So uh, how many milliliters of uh, volume do we have of the uh, mixed fuel? Well, you'll have about 350. So this is actually yes. far more than 50%. So if he's got 350 milliliters of mixed fuel here, and as we verified here, 250 milliliters, actually even uh, maybe slightly less than 250 milliliters were dumped in there after I, I took a very, very tiny sip from the bottle. Uh, so we probably have more than 50% at Great. this point in time. Great. This is just basically a clean, yep. a clean bottle. So what we're going to do is uh, hand this off to Dave, and then um, it's not, bear in mind, it's not filtered. So I'm just going to tip it in here. Uh, Dave will tip this in, Lee will start the car up, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, Dave, that's for you. All right. You can give it a try. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, uh, again, uh, Dave is going to verify here that we have this uh, normal container that's going to act as the fuel tank for the vehicle, um, and that is uh, going into the uh, injector pump. Dave, you want to give that a quick check and just verify that that's what's happening there? Yeah, that's just straight into the injector pump. What we've got here is the actual fuel tank return coming back as well, going into the top of our container. So other than that, it's good to go. So I'll tip this in. You've had this in your hand since you mixed it? Yeah. What's up? All right, so you're quite confident then that if, as long as you can see the fuel coming back through here and that it's been running for a couple of minutes, that it will indeed be running on the mixture that we just created and that that's something that would, in fact, be unexpected. Yeah, definitely. Okay, what we've got, we've got a separate container here because obviously the, the vehicle's sitting now with the injectors and the pump full of just regular diesel fuel. So we've got this return line, we're actually going to dump it into just this container to start with. Um, and once the, you'll actually see the fuel change colour at the point where the diesels all bleed out and the, the bias fuel is starting to come through. So at that point we'll drop it into, the, into the, the actual fuel tank that we're using and we'll be just running on their fuel. This container's gone down quite a bit, so it clearly is running on the fuel now. Okay, so Dave is satisfied that it's actually running on uh, the fuel that we just mixed. Yeah, definitely. It's almost run out. So that got put to the point where it ran completely out, so it's used everything that we mixed up that's in the container to run through until it's run out of fuel. So, and obviously, there's the end of the fuel system back here, and it's not connected to anything, so there's no no regular diesel gone any, anywhere near it. So, uh, Dave, um, after seeing this, um, you personally observed that the uh, water was in fact mixed into the container and that it was uh, about 250 mils of water out of 350 milliliters of total volume. And we carried that over ourselves uh, and that that's what we ran in there. And are you surprised by the result? Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly done everything that they, they said it would. Um, and in such a large quantity of water um, that, that it did mix um, and, and the vehicle then ran on it for, mm. for you know, three or four minutes or five minutes or whatever it was until it ran out completely out of the fuel so um, that, that certainly opened my eyes I, you know, I was a, a harsh skeptic and, uh, and it's, it's good to see it happen and right in front of us like that. I still don't know what to make of all of this I mean I know what I saw but the eyes can be deceiving so Steve and I have agreed to redo this test at an ASTM certified lab in the United States to remove any possible doubt and you'll see that video in the next few months.